All right, real estaters, it's week 46. If you didn't get a deal under contract last week, it probably ain't closing this year. Unless you just need to dump something. And if you do... Call me. Yeah, we had one of those last year. We did. Quick hits real quick. If you want the glossary, we're going to make a nice little glossary for those who like and follow and write a review for our podcast. Mm -hmm. So please, someone, do that. (laughs) Do it. Do it. Property availabilities, 3450 Bethlehem, 26,787 square feet on 3.41 acres, zoned K, heavy industrial in Fort Worth. Call Todd Hubbard or David Gwynn on that. 2030 South J. Elmer Turner Freeway, 11,100 square feet on 10 gross, seven paved acres. Currently working a lease on half of that, but we still got some sites available. We'll build a building there. Bronze is off the market. Parkside is going to have, bronze is going under contract. Parkside is going to have some availability come up Jan 1. And then we have dividend in San Antonio, 15,494 square feet on 1.41 acres. Call Colin at uh, Lano Realty Partners. Also need to add, we're bringing 825 East Pleasant Run in Lancaster to market. It's 5,000 feet on three acres. Tenant will be leaving at the end of the year. We'll sell the building or lease it. Call me on that. Okay, economic calendar, initial jobless claims, forecast 220, previous 217. Housing starts come out this week. Previous was 1.35. The forecast is 1.34. And existing home sales is also this week. 3.84 million previously and 3.91 is the forecast. How many pounds did we put on last week, Will? 19. Damn. Right on the money? Right on the money. It took me like six weeks in a row, though. Yeah. 19 is usually a pretty... Pretty good clip. That's a pretty average clip. So. Yeah. Good, good guessing. The Dow lost a thousand points last week to close out at 43.444. SP lost 134 to close out at 58.70. NASDAQ closed out at 18.680, down 547 points. West Texas crude was down $1.25 a barrel to $67.43. The five-year treasury closed out at 4.3, and the 10-year at 4.43, up 10 bips. Sofer is at 4.57. So we got a rate cut last week. Not really doing much, though, for these, these interest rates that we have. We'll talk about that a little more here in a bit. Real estate stocks last week, REIT Diversify was the only one in the positive. REIT Specialty was in second, REIT Residential in third, REIT Retail in four. On the one-month performance, all the stocks are down except for REIT Retail and REIT Healthcare. They're not up very much. But on the whole, on the last three months, healthcare facilities and health services is leading. Real estate services, sorry, not health services. Term of the week. What you got? Someone said this to us a while back mm-hmm. when they sent us a deal, and I didn't even know what it meant. But I'm going to let you explain what it means because you know what it means. I'm not sure if I, I you've used it in a sentence before on a phone call, so by default you're gonna you're okay. Gonna, you're gonna give this. So you're just you're just you're just like it's you. Yeah, it's okay. you. It's you. Chunky. Yeah, it's a real chunky deal, Will. Yeah, I, I haven't used it in a long time though. So I'm I'm trying to think of context. It I, if the references were always like usually around price per pound, yeah, or like the equity amount was like chunky. It's like like just kind of like yeah, it's big. I don't think that's no. It. Was no. that not it? Mm-mm. It's kind of a chunky deal. I think it's just kind of fucked up. Okay, maybe. <laughs> I always thought it was the price per pound chunky. Maybe I totally, uh, 
It's been a while. It has been a while. It's this been a one. while. This has been some months. It was an Oklahoma City deal. It was an Oklahoma City deal. With a Tulsa broker. Yeah. That deal's chunky, Will. It's a real chunky deal, Will. Yeah, it was. I, was like, I, don't, I don't even know what that means. I <laughs> but I've heard it since. I, refresh us if if you're listening to this, people, and you use chunky in your daily vocabulary. Oh, someone on here's listened used chunky before. Yeah. If it's in your vernacular. Do you know what that word means? <laughs> it's part of it's it's in my brain and yeah, I can use it. Yeah, sure. That's good. There yeah, you go. Texas yeah. Tech right there for the win. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> And my kids, I was uh, speaking on that this week. They're uh, this weekend going around. They made the, these, uh, they're not Legos, they're another block, but they're going around like, guns up, guns up. I was like, oh, okay. All right, there we go. <laughs> How funny. So, you want to hear something really cool over the weekend, though? Uh -huh. I thought Trump walked up in the UFC with his whole crew. The whole crew. Yeah. That was Robert sick. F. Kennedy, Tulsi Gabbard. Elon, Elon, like, who is the little dude with glasses? He I don't like know, a nerd. but he was like, he was like eyeing the camera, like, yeah, <laughs> I'm all five foot four. I'm here to fucking party. Yeah, and you're like, okay, guy. Have you seen? Uh, I think two, he's like, in the Senate. Hold on, let me look him up. What are you saying? Have you seen some of the NFL dudes? They're doing the Trump dance. Yes. whenever they <laughs> celebrate. Oh. Uh, that was pretty cool. It's kind of like a revolution going on. Yeah. You know? It's, uh, I don't know. You would have never seen another president at a UFC fight. He's probably going to be at every one. Why wouldn't you? That's a great time to go get pub. Yeah. I mean, also, it's just like he enjoys it. Everybody's chanting USA. Really? Yeah. It's in Madison Square yeah. Garden. Well, you know, he helped Dana White a long time ago. Mm -hmm. He had him in Atlantic City. Nobody wanted him out there in Vegas. I mean, he likes fights. He sponsored fights. He's promoted fights. Yeah, he was hosted them. The big boxing matches back in the day. Yeah. Oh yeah. So uh, it makes sense. It was it was pretty cool. I it is like, super cool. He's a normal dude. Yeah. Uh, how about I don't know how about, about normal? The, but how about the celebrities that are leaving? They're like. Uh, there are some that are like, I'm moving. That's you know, great. That happened Leave. again. What's so funny about that is that is so weak. It's like, it's like democracy worked and that's what I wanted, but I don't like it. Have, I'm leaving. Have fun living taking in another my, country. Taking my toys and going home. Yeah. Go live in another country. Tell me how it is. I've lived in other countries. America's the best. What celebrities are leaving the U.S.? Oh, there Ooh, he is. Here he are. Jeffrey's calling. My name is Jeff. <laughs> I, I think that's going to sting. It oh, is. it is. I had numerous people at uh, Black Tie Brawl come up and be like, I love the the the, in, the bit for Jeff. My yeah. name is Jeff. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> oh. oh, great. Oh. That is great stuff, Jeremy. Oh. Thank you. That's just little brother right there, right? <laughs> oh, man. That is, man, how did you do last week? Honestly, what was your? I don't. I I, I left at my office. <laughs> okay, I, I was gonna left Mark at my office. <laughs> oh man, Hold yeah, on. we're gonna get it. We gotta get our season total figured out. So I got Laurel working on it. She's I took all your email. She's compiling it. So we'll have we'll have an update next week on where we at where we're at season wide. You put an underwriting analyst on that? Yeah, sure did. Yeah. Nice. That's where, so that's where real dollars need to be spent. <laughs> Pass that through to your tenant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. Like, it was the weekend that I didn't care. Like, I don't even think I watched hardly any college football this weekend. There really? Wasn't, there wasn't much. There just wasn't much. It was a fight a weekend. Game. It was a fight weekend. It was a fight weekend. Mm-hmm. Well, I was watching the ponies in the stand when the big the big boy showed up. Oh, that's right. Jeff Jay Murr got him a ten point this weekend. Yeah. Like, very nice. It's pretty excited about that. God, how nice is it to get it over with like this early in the season and you're like, check that box. Now, yeah. now I just don't have to worry. There's no pressure on you. You can go you can go chill on the blind and shoot or not shoot and yeah, I'm like Dak Prescott, guaranteed contract at this point. 
<laughs> That's funny. Oh my oh. gosh. Had a lot of hog action too, huh? You saw at the at the Yeah. That's yeah right. you're, you're in Barrett's blind is um ready to produce bacon. There we go, baby. There we go. Little winter wheat bringing them in so mm -hmm. <laughs> they look really good yeah looks really good and you know i know y'all promote your properties hey we've got 320 acres for sale in graham texas that's right jeff does have 320 oh, acres on the market officially <laughs> yeah that's yeah kind of sad. we'll see we'll see barrett uh barrett was like man they're getting a lot of views online <laughs> uh, is this the property you were yeah. working on for a little bit jeremy no, it's just I've been doing. Yeah, I've been getting it ready for hunting season this year. So, yeah. So uh, here we go. What's this? What week is? What do they call this? Week twelve? Yeah. Let's see. Chat GPT would know. My favorite. What week? Man, how, how did the line makers do this? Because the Kansas BYU game is just. Yeah, this is week twelve. The yeah, why do they? Then they hate BYU. I, but like Kansas beat them outright. Like I'm, not, I'm yeah. just shocked, shocked at that game. They're just looking at something different than the score. Totally right. It's got to be right. It has to be because Kansas is having a bad year. Yeah, no, they're like they've won like three or four games. So well, you know, they might get bowl eligible if they finish up the year right you never know so love their coach he's a great coach yeah but just bad year did you you didn't send me your picks did you uh, i thought i did uh, but well, i can go over them yeah I'm, I'm ready let's go okay i i thought this was a fairly easy bet i'm gonna take their i'm gonna take the i'm out of hoosiers all year but 12 and a half. Yeah. They're 12 and a half point dogs. Yeah. They're undefeated and covered every game. Like, come on. Yeah. I, I think they definitely could lose, but yeah. I don't think it's, I think it's like maybe it's touchdown. Maybe. Yeah. No, this, this is going to be a game. I'm going with the uh, UMass can't score against a FCC defense except for Mississippi State. <laughs> so I'm going to go on Georgia, the game under 55 and a half. Man, UMass has a bunch of SEC games this year. That's the third mm. one. It's the third one. Huh. Mm -hmm. They're getting the money up. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I saw that. I didn't, okay. I, I like the, I like the under on that. I didn't think about the under. I just looked at the spread and I said, oof. Kentucky plus I, 20 and a half. I'm taking that one too. I like that. Kentucky's, I think I think they have a great coach. Mm -hmm. I think UT has struggled ever since Quinn got hurt. Yep, and there's too much chatter about him or Arch. So I'm going to take the Wildcats, sir. Yep, uh, I'm going to take Shadu. I'm going to take Colorado over the game over because they just keep putting up points. Yeah, fifty nine and a half. I like so, that. I like Shadow. I like the the Crimson Tide to beat the Crimson and Cream. Yeah, I like this. I like too. Alabama minus fourteen. I like this too. I'm gonna keep it maroon, even though I hate it. I'm gonna take the Aggies minus uh, Curry. I, I I took that game too. I just that line looks really off. It does look off. Auburn's not that great, and. No, as much as I hate to say it, AM's pretty decent this year. I mean, I guess the only theory is AM's looking past this game to the UT game, so they're going to underperform. I guess, but I don't know. It's pretty important for them to win this game. Yeah, they're so, going to win out. Yeah, they everyone's win out. everyone in that scenario has to win out. Yep, yep. I'm going to take the Pies game over 58 and a half. Yep. I'm going to take the Texas Tech OSU under 68 and a half. Really? I'm, I'm going to be opposite, guys. So I usually don't bet on Tech straight up. I'm taking money line this. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not taking money line. I'm taking points. I'm okay. taking the three and a half. I think we beat OSU. I feel like we. Uh, I feel like we can go on the road and just get this win. We had a week off. I know we kind of shit the bed last time we had a week off, but I think. Uh, 
Taj is going to have a game? I just, man, I think Oklahoma State is in disarray this year. I think they are a mess. Poo poo. And um, yeah, they they are. They they appear to be. And ever since, um, oh, what's his name? OSU coach turned forty. I've kind of had a kind of had it out for them too. Mm. So oh yeah, ever <laughs> since he's said he was a grown man. I'm a man. I'm forty. <laughs> I don't know your reference. One of the but, most memorable quotes for sure. Oh, he it when Tech played OSU like fifteen years ago or something. We we pissed old Mike Gundy off pretty bad. I think Leach was dogging some of his players. He's like, "I'm a man. I'm forty. You can attack oh, me." Oh yes, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. So we always kind of old Leach kind of spurred a little rivalry there. So. And we get to face Alan Bowman, who was our quarterback like mm. 10 years ago, still playing college oh. football. <laughs> um, Does he still have y'all's playbook? Uh, three coaches yeah, ago. Yeah, like three right? coaches ago, actually. <laughs> yeah. so. I, want the, I want the Black Knights to win so badly against Notre Dame. I do, too. I, I'm they, taking them. But but I'm not going to take them. I'm going to take the over 44 and a half. I think they're going to score points to win that game. So I'm going to whip out and just take the over. Yeah, I think they cover. I think they keep it close. This is like this is like pre Super Bowl for them because the Super Bowl's next week or something for them. The Navy game. Although by the way, Navy got destroyed. Who did Navy lose to this weekend? They got rocked. They got they shut get- out. They did get shut out. Um, I don't remember by who. It was by Tulane. Yeah, Tulane. Three. They've lost three or four. Yeah, they were on a roll. They lost yeah. thirty-five to nothing. Yeah. Oh, mm. Yeah. They, that, that sounds like that's where there's injuries. That. Yeah. I'm just not following that team well enough to know. And finally, maybe a Houston. Cougar hater again and go Baylor minus eight. Yeah, I, I, it's like those are two teams. I just don't know who is going to show up, so I stayed away from it. But I, I, I could see it. That's uh, where I get. That's my uh, picks. Um, additional games I have. I've got. I got Cincinnati covering eight and a half against Kansas State. I feel like Cincinnati's better than what they are, and Kansas State just. Irrelevant. They're kind of lost this year. Yeah. So I'm taking that. Uh, I'm taking Vandy at eight and a half against LSU. Yeah, I really wanted to get the Commodore Cornelius is going, but <laughs> LSU's which which LSU is going to show up? That's I don't know. Very true. Which one? Let's see. I got that one. I got SMU also. I'm taking um I'm taking the Hurricanes again. It's twenty four points. I don't know. I just kind of a kind of a I, mean, I know you love the Hurricanes. I love That's the fun. Hurricanes. So um I'm taking Florida against Mississippi to cover. Lagway is healthy and playing, and he's if he's playing, it's a totally different ball game mm. for Florida. He's special. Totally. Yeah. Totally different. So I think they have a shot. They're playing at home. I think it's pretty tough to go into the swamp and get a win. So I'm going to take Michigan minus 12 over Northwestern. I don't know why. I really have no thought on that. I just looked at it and I was like, uh, at least Michigan. Uh, Michigan's not great this year. But it's at they, home. It's at home. They got the athletes. And Northwestern's offense is really bad. Yeah. And, um, they're pretty much on brand for where they should be in that conference, so you're probably right. Yeah, so I don't really have a deep thought, but that's kind of it. I'm taking the BYU Cougs again, plus three and a half. I'm still perplexed by that. I feel like I'm I'm betting, I'm forcing myself to have a win on that. From- I learned last weekend where I watched the opening of that game, there's only five Jews at BYU. Only five Jews? Huh. They, they said on TV there was only five Jewish students. And what? my question was, why was there so many? Are, are they football players? Uh, uh, they have to be athletes, right? Yeah. But interesting. Huh. That's, a, that's a weird stat to put Do on Do you think TV. they got confused when they said Mormon Tabernacle that 
It was just a tabernacle. <laughs> <laughs> that is odd, right? Like that's um, that is odd because if you're good enough to go to BYU, you're good enough to go somewhere else, probably. Although I don't know if there's a real Jewish university. Yeah, there are tons. Yeshiva. Yeah, but like New York. Oh, not Utah. But, no way. But like with athletic programs that are Temple. Is Temple a Jewish university? Yeah. Thing. I uh, I thought Temple was Catholic. No, that's St. Joe's. Hold on. Let me look. Let me fact check myself. Yeah, that's like your backyard. Temple. Um Yeah, Philly boys. No, I'm really wrong. Baptist. Temple's oh, okay. Well, Baptist. Hmm. Huh. Yeah, they got the Old and New Testament, so you missed, you missed a little bit there. Speaking of Temple, they offered the Walnut Grove uh, running back oh. who had 400, like 400 yards in the game this week. Wow. Some is he going to go there? Man, uh, what year is he? He's a junior. I think he's going to get a lot more offers. But uh, we won. We beat Arlington Seguin. It's a very ugly game on our part, but we won it. Prosper High lost first round. That's first really time they've lost first round. They lost to the Coppell Cowboys. It's kind of like a round three game in round one. It's kind of weird, but uh, Coppell we, was ten. You and said 0. last week Coppell was like top ten in the state. Yeah, they're ten and one. They were ten and zero going into that game. They won. It was like thirty five to twenty seven. So what happened to Graham? They went down to uh, Fort Worth, didn't they? Yeah, yeah they won. They uh, Ooh. they played Fort Worth Dunbar. They they won sixty to nothing. Wow. The farmers went to the inner city. Wow. Yeah, that was that was quite a beatdown. What uh who who's Graham got up this week? Oh gosh. I have no idea. Hang on. Is Brock still in the like mix? Monahans. I think they actually do play Monahans or something like that. <sighs> Seminole. We got Lubbock Cooper in Abilene Friday night. Oh. Are you going? I don't think so. Surely you can get like a Online yeah, watching it. There'll be a streaming um, thing. Although, are they playing at ACU? No, they're playing at a, at a high school stadium. Because they were going to play at ACU, I might have gone. That's a pretty cool. The ACU stadium. stadium was really cool. Yeah, I like that. But uh, let's see, playoffs. Do you know that Bob Saget went to Temple? <laughs> the comedian? <laughs> yeah. He's dead. <laughs> he is dead. It's not- Let's see. I didn't know he was dead. He, how, old, how old was he when he, he died last left? year? Yeah, probably. Like, two years ago. He died at the Ritz in Florida. Sure. Had a big old heart attack. Let's see. Well, what, what do you think of your money line pick this week? What's uh, Pitt, for sure, but I'm a little nervous running running three losses here in a row. So we gave Who Clem- do they have? We got Louisville. Jeff, Ooh. you're absolutely right. Graham plays Monahans. <laughs> <laughs> Monahans. That's where the mullet still loves strong. Yeah. That is some West Texas right there. Okay, sorry, Will. Back to your money line pick. No, I that's all I got. I just but Louisville's a good team this year. Not Louisville is good. So I think it's gonna be a nail biter. Gonna be a nail biter. Unfortunately. All right, guys. Well, sounds like a good week. It is a good week. I liked a lot more games. I'll watch a lot more college football this Mm -hmm. weekend. So, Mm -hmm. y'all have a good week. See ya. See See ya. All right. Let's look at some news real quick. This was an article that actually old J.K. Walker. Yep. At uh, Third Coast Bank sent me. If the Fed is cutting rates, why aren't mortgage rates falling? So, Central Bank lowered its benchmark rate by a quarter point last Thursday. But the average on a 30-year fixed mortgage has gone in the opposite direction since the Fed's first cut, rising more than half a percentage point to 6.79, Freddie Mac said Thursday. It's going up because the treasuries are going up, which is, you know... That's what's going on. Let's see. The Fed wants to push down the cost of borrowing for more homes, cars, and other purchases, but mortgage rates aren't determined by the Fed. They are heavily influenced by treasury yields, which go up and down based on the economic expectations. And the outlook for growth is strong. Keep both yields, keeping both yields and mortgage rates high. 
Yields also have been rising since President-elect Donald Trump's victory. It was an overwhelming victory. It's one of the greatest victories I've ever, I think they've ever had. Yeah, it was huge. <laughs> it was huge. Uh, uh, investors think that Trump's tax cut heavy agenda would add to the deficit and increase economic growth and inflation that would put upward pressure on treasury yields. Trump has also promised higher tar- tariffs, which could further add to inflation. Higher for longer, unfortunately, for all of us is going to be a thing, even in the face of Fed rate cuts. I kind of don't disagree with that. Yeah, I don't really see... It's not going to get dramatically cheaper Yeah, soon. It's probably healthy, though. Healthy. The interest rate banks pay customers on their accounts has also been slow to fall. The highest yielding one-year CD has an average rate of 4.6 in late October versus 4.9 in mid-September. The highest yielding savings account rate fell to 5.1 from to five from 5.3 over that time. So the rising rate in mortgages has dampened any rebound in home sales and given owners less of a reason to refinance. Mortgage applications have fallen for six straight weeks, according to the Mortgage Bankers Association. Mortgage is tough right now, man. Yeah. The rates are not where we need them to be to account for how high home prices have gotten. So rates need to get closer to five for them to really kick mm-hmm. off. So let's see what else we got. Old Nate Paul reports to jail. He went to jail. Good. Paul reported to the Travis County Jail on 10.14 p.m. Thursday. Austin real estate investor Nate Paul faces looming jail sentence following the recent contempt of court ruling. Paul, the founder of World Class Housing, was instructed to report to Travis County Jail by Friday to begin serving a 10-day sentence. The contempt ruling follows a prolonged legal dispute between Paul and the Might Foundation, which filed a lawsuit accusing him of mishandling investment dealings with the foundation. The lawsuit centers on Paul's alleged violation of an injunction that required him to report financial transfers over $25,000. The judge later ruled that Paul had violated these orders by allegedly committing perjury and withholding details on specific transactions. He did a bunch of stuff, so... Anyways, he's finally going to jail for a couple of days. Paul also faces a handful of federal criminal charges involving wire and bank fraud. If found guilty in that case, he faces up to 20 years in prison for the wire fraud and 30 Yeesh. years for the bank fraud. Yeesh. This isn't Paul's first rodeo with the U.S. justice system. In mid-2022, NBA player Avery Bradley sued Paul for $8 million alleging wrongdoing in a multi-million dollar investment deal involving world-class holdings. That same year, the auction of several world-class holdings probably was scheduled amid the fallout of bankruptcies and foreclosures. The auction included significant assets from its portfolio, including a prime South Congress assemblage that related companies bought for $65 million. So anyways, he's, he's in jail right now. Sorry, probably can't listen. I know he's a listener. Long-time P1 from day one. Come on, Nate. <laughs> Um, and then last thing I got in news is the Trump tariffs have kind of, I I heard from multiple brokers last week that they are being contacted by foreign entities to move manufacturing plants here to Dallas. So I bet a lot of you guys out there listening or, uh, hearing that out there and, um, fielding those calls, but, um, you know, putting a 20% tariff on all products imported into the country could end up being a driver of more manufacturing in DFW, supercharging a trend of foreign companies looking for plant space in the Metroplex, I, according to industrial brokers. I think this is a real thing starting yeah. to happen. And uh, we we had numerous guys tell us that that this is – they've been getting those inquiries. Yeah. All the, the, big, the big groups, too, are, you know, they got – Offices across the world, yada, yada, yada. So, and, uh, you know, Mexico's gotten really friendly with us and is probably getting to continue to get friendly. They've had a presidential change recently. Yeah. So, I expect that to kind of heat on up. Laredo, Texas became ground zero of the nearshoring boom in the wake of the pandemic. And Dallas has picked up an outsized piece of that in years followed. So, yeah, no, it, it's, I think this is a real thing. So, 
some of those funkier buildings that are all manufacturing driven are going to get leased up or bought or whatever. So exactly. Well, it's kind of all I got. That's not all that much. I'm just in the weeds on deals. Yeah, we got a lot rolling right now. So send us some more. Send us some more deals. Or if you want to invest with us, give us a call. On the equity side. That's right. Not on the fun side. Wink, wink. Right. All right. See ya. See ya. See ya.